Boom! Hi guys! Hi! This is Royce over here uh, from Realtor Highs. Today I'll be going through uh, REX studies for the paper one. So, uh, guys, so those who are attending this uh, is preparing for the exam. I'm going in detail for some of the portion, but not every single part. So, uh, guys, let's get started as you can see from my screen. Alright, at the first part, which means the uh, characteristics of a real estate, which is telling you that, okay, it cannot be divided, real estate is actually a whole property, it's immovable, you cannot move the property from one point to another point, it's durable because it's uh, the span is at the way and tear after, and uh, it's heterogeneous, which is, uh, every property have their own unique, uh, specific different flaw, there's no identical Units. So yeah, this is the characteristic. Take note of it. Uh, also, in the economical uh, ways that uh, it's actually a very high cost of transaction. All the stand duty, agent fee, legal fees, is illiquidable. So it takes time to buy and time to sell. The transaction is very long, six to eight weeks. So it's a long transaction. Huh? Supply is very elastic. Inelastic. It's because they are very like getting lesser lens uh lens sales and they are actually. Uh, takes time to produce a project. So yes, the supplies is getting lesser and lesser, even the demand is increasing. So, external costs and benefits. So they are the use of land, what they can do, what they can't do, the strata division, all these are in the credits. So you must understand the differences. And the last part will be economic. Uh, one part of economic is the additional by uh, influence such as government intervention, the TDSR, MSR, ABSD, SSD, Foreign restrictions, uh, irrational. So the uh, as for this part, to take note that you guys have to uh, be very aware of this. So uh, there are not all owners are going to sell for profit, which means that they are actually looking at a, a rental yield every year. So to earn the rental yield, so they are okay to earn lesser instead of getting the uh, capital gain. So all the information are not completed. So you do not have one property's information of the purchase, sales, or everything. There's no perfect answer. So you must understand that the real estate industry is like this. Cost of property management, which means that you will need uh, people to manage the property, you need people to take care of the property, and the rest of the stuff. Hey guys, hey again. So real estate investment. So we actually have three type of investment. Actually, one will be the property itself directly. One will be uh, real estate uh, company shares, such as uh, Prodnex, Realty. They actually have already get listed, and one is uh, REITs. So, uh, in a real estate investment, what are the pros and cons? Okay, this you have to understand. You have to understand. You don't have to memori memorize, but you do need to understand why is there a benefits and loss. So, uh, take note of the capital gain against inflation, uh, financial leverages, so you can take loans and everything, estate building portfolio, which is people are doing investments, uh, rent, uh, rental yield, all those things, uh, even earning the profits of the gains, so durable, uh, no capital gain tax, this is uh, only in Singapore, take note, Singapore, it doesn't have any uh, property gain tax, ownership you have to control and the use and control. So the negativity of a uh, real estate investment actually is uh, inequality, huge capital layout. This is just physical real estate, uh, physical property. Okay, so uh, financial risk, business risk, fluctuation, depreciation, management fee, and complexity. So you guys have your own notes uh, from your own school. So I'm expecting that you guys are going through this as a revision not as a uh, full cost, so you guys can be here to listen more. So REITs, what is a REITs? Actually, it's an investment scheme uh, created by, uh, where funds are actually invested in a portfolio of a real estate industry to generate income. So these are mostly like rental. There are a few REITs, Ascendance, Capital Land, Maple Tree REITs. There are a few REITs in Singapore. So what's the good thing about it? It's actually divisible. So it's like a, a bit like a stock. So you can actually buy a small portion of the you don't have to come with a very big capital. It's affordable, so it's very cheap because it's dividable. It's liquid, uh, liquidity is very good because uh, there's no need for you to uh, hold the things, uh, take a long time to transact. You can just sell all the stocks uh, almost immediately. So it's transparent, flexible, uh, tax benefit. So all these things are the REITs information. Okay, carry on. So now we are in the real estate market. So take note of this. 
that uh, there's actually a function so you get where's the market exchange real estate property goods and anything placed so in the characteristics of a real estate market there's no central market there's no data in sufficient so it's very lack of data so the is due to the data inefficiency they are imperfect markets which means that some properties are not even sold yet so there's no way to guide you that there's what's the the fair value of the market price of that property so in singapore property they are residential and non-residential just take note of every single thing such as a uh, residential you got public you got private what are the privates landed property uh non-landed for public there's HTB and EC and there's one more is DBSS which I never include because it's really uh it's still valid in the resale market but there's no new DBSS anymore. So uh there are non-residential such as commercial, industrial, uh, oh say sorry for the spelling. Uh, so there are other things ongoing. Okay guys we're currently oh, for in private property this is resi residential so they are landed is GCB bungalow semi D Terrace, Shwata Landed. So for non-landed, there are condo and apartments. So uh, non-residential, there's a crown, it will be uh, commercial, industrial, and place of worship. There will be office, retail shop, factory, warehouse, business park, and well, uh, worship. So there are a few classification in URA that you really need to uh, how do they separate the residential property? Firstly, it's landed and not landed. These two will be because of the affordability of the land. Okay, sorry guys, because you can see, I will change the color blue. So density, low density is for mostly landed because there won't be so much, uh, it's not multi. So for medium and high will be mostly uh, HDB, EC, or condo. So, so flat type, there's only landed and flat, which is uh, apartments mostly. So do take note of the classification of the residential development, such as low density, just now as you were saying. So which are the types that are in here? You can actually uh, think about it, uh, know about it. So in the medium, a high density uh, or the high rise. So okay, going for the first, landed housing. So it's a low rise, low density residential development. It, there's a few types. Uh, what do you need by strata? Uh, I'll explain it later. So for now, you will know that there's actually almost uh, three types, majority. There are the semi-Ds, the detached, the terrace housing, and one more lastly will be the good class bungalow. So um, there's a GCB, good class bungalow, that you will listen to a lot of things later. That's the most expensive property in Singapore. Secondly, Foreigners need LDAU approval. LDAU is land dealing approval unit. Land dealing approval unit. Which you will learn at a later time or while you're revising, you should know what LDAU means already. So guys, uh, going to a simple one. Okay, for detached, which is all the bungalows, it's a freestanding block which actually has a plot size minimum of 400 meter square and a site 50 percent so take note of this this could be your exam question next gcb one of the highest the most expensive the five star five star uh problem. so it's actually a minimum plot ratio uh, plot size of 1400 meter square it could be meter square it could be square feet please find out yourself uh, remember one of it uh site with, uh coverage of 40 percent maximum of two story only the height of the building is only two story and it's only within the 39 gcb area so you cannot build a good class bungalow outside of this 39 gcb area which is below here i give you already the all 39 so do remember one or two for your uh, exam in case they're asking you next semi-detached houses which is uh they are actually like a detached house bungalow, which is cut into half, which is cut into half. So take note, minimal plot size is a uh, two hundred meter has a sharing common wall. Uh, is considered separate unit, and take note, no 
side coverage coverage percentage percentage so you can actually almost use the whole land if you have the setback correct everything so next corner uh, terrace and corner terrace which is minimum of three dwelling houses on the common boundary which means they are actually a, a row a row of landed houses together so those are in between are considered terrace one and two which are actually a minimum of 150 square feet and 80 square feet for corner terrace uh, the corner terrace is the bigger one so uh, they are not actually limited to the, min min the minimum will be bigger however take note that the width of the corner terrace is a little bit different compared to the in the in middle uh, middle ones so take note of that carry on okay now for the minimum plot ratio dimension remember just now a good class bungalow bungalow is all uh high see even a uh, semi d regardless of what site is also 200 only the terrace will be different so do take note even the corner units you see it's also 18 meters square and do take note of the width also uh, i was tested once in the width uh, for the bungalows in the exam so next carry on so in the strata landed housing which is means it's strata but no condominium status which means there's a MCST managing the place it's like a, a, a group of landed property can be bungalow can be semi-d can be terrace house surrounded and there's a MCST managing it however there's no condo status which means it's not a condo we call it strata landed housing so these are also a uh, divided landed housing within the area however they also have to fulfill the site coverage similar to the the normal one that they need, however they need to have a 45 percent net area for communal open space which is common area minimum plot size of 1000 square meters okay so the strata types is exactly the same as the uh, non strata so you will take note of there are other other landed such as townhouse and cluster house houses. So, for non landed property, in Singapore, firstly, it must be uh, apartments in Singapore. It must be uh, residential purposes only. Uh, separate own separate access, mostly mainly medium and high density housing, which is four and above stories. So uh, there are a few types, there are duplex, high-rise, low-rise, and walk-up apartments. Do know the differences, but I'm not going in detail because actually this is a revision. This is not a full course. Okay, guys, carry on. Okay, now condominium. Uh, okay, condominium, minimum of 4,000 square meters site area. So the area must be very big. However, only 40% will be used for staying. So... Uh, Whole, uh, residential use the rest of the 60 percent will be used for other facilities such as gym common area swimming pool greenery it could be anything so a convenience status only can be approved by ura if it's not uh ura approved condominium status it's considered strata apartment which is uh, a totally different thing okay so foreigners can buy condominium without any restriction foreigners are not allowed to buy landed unless they got an approval okay so we are moving on to commercial development. Commercial development, there are three types. One, commercial type. Two, miss, miss uh, commercial and residence. Third, residential with commercial. So this is a full commercial type. It's 100% used for commercial. Take note of that. Uh, it can be strata divided, which means a commercial building can divide uh, units or levels to uh, uh, different individual owners. However, there are some changes in this. As recently, URA have just announced that they stopped strata dividing commercial buildings. Do read up URA website as this will be tested in your exam. Anything one month before your exam will be tested. Second, mixed residential which means such as a uh, mixed property when there's a mall with a residential property condominium within the mall so there's a, a very popular one of this however do take note that the uh, maximum of 40 percent is used for commercial the rest of 60 percent will be residential okay so subdivision allowed in the residential commercial not necessary anymore do read up next the last one will be residential with commercial these are the shop houses it could be a hdb shop house it could be a private shop house 
as long as the first level is always used for commercial use only basement are not allowed for commercial use okay so for strata division is normally allowed except for con uh, conservation properties this will be uh, you should really understand what you mean by conservation properties so uh level two level three could be used for other purposes but level one must be used for commercial it must not be used for residential purpose okay industrial and warehouses so with industrial and warehouses there are a few types there are uh, landed there are semi-d and there are terrace houses now they are uh for industrial they are categorized in b1 and b2 do take note the difference in b1 and b2 what are the different types in b1 and b2 i'm not going to go in detail because you guys are revision i'm only going to help you guys here as much as i can but i will need you to go into deep search you can use this as a revision video and guideline however when i'm asking you to uh, do a more research you have to do it okay next supply and demand for uh property today is very uh sorry wrong this is inelastic as there are lesser and lesser because there's lesser uh older buildings there are actually uh lesser new buildings lesser and uh the development size are like getting lesser governments is not releasing so much and it's getting more expensive so demands are factors are affecting uh, political social and economic so uh, you must understand the difference between a seller's market and a buyer's market such as uh which is in demand the price will go up or go down so okay guys real estate cycle so this is actually tested uh once uh in one of the areas that i actually uh, took uh okay for expansion decline recession, uh, recession and recovery so this is actually a real estate cycle do understand it individually and take note that the intensity and length of each phase depends overall so uh so-called economic climax so it's very hard to tell how long will it be or how intensive will it be so to take note that this uh i was tested tested this once next Singapore property price index. Uh, so we can actually get a few price index from different platforms. So firstly, URA property price index is actually a broad market of all properties in Singapore. Second, this is the private residential URA private residential. So URA provides you with not only the all the property in Singapore, also the private residential. Third, URA will be providing commercial property price index. So these three will be provided by URA. JTC price in the industrial price index and HDB resale all this do take note of what the information you can get must remember that it's separate it's not together do not think that it's not tested uh, even they will test you the term of it so I'll tell you which part will be termed later so today facts facts for affecting prices firstly location condition market trend which is the most popular one uh, size shape height and view uh, higher floor definitely nice higher price better view price uh, accessibility is it near an mrt is it near a bus stop is it near, is it near an expressway so neighborhood what they have in facility facilities are mostly uh the condos will be affected layout and design how new is it how old is it what is the shape is it the shape that the buyers want so okay part two who are mostly the market players in the real estate as occupiers, investors, uh, end users, facilitator, uh, facilitator and uh, developers. So do take note that these are the agencies, government agencies that will affect uh, the real estate industry. Every single one, I'm not going to go through. Take a look yourself, pause the video and record down whatever you need because I will not be giving you, uh, I will not be sending out these uh, slides. Uh, this is my own personal uh, slides uh, trying to help people who are trying to pass the exam. So part three, land law. So you must understand the common laws and uh, equity and local reg uh, regulations. So understand real property, real property in law term, what it means. Describing ownership, permanent and immovable property, a real property that can be moved. Immovable, must always remember, uh, any personal property is movable. Uh, can be considered movable, chalet or fittings, and anything that's not 
it is a fixture, so it's a could be a real property. So to take note of this, uh, Henry Diensman, because this is tested, sorry, my English isn't that good, but uh, this is tested in the exam. Do take note. Okay, interest in a property. There are two kinds of interest, which means the a person's entity or rights of property. So you do understand that the difference between a legal interest and an equity interest. Legal interest which means you have right over the land and bind it to everyone. Equity is uh, actually a uh, so-called uh, trust, uh, uh, come incoming buyer that actually have an interest in the property. Okay? So you must understand the difference. So the definition of land. Guys, I am not going to go through this. This is in the Land Title Act. So do remember to understand that we have two definitions for lands. Alright, I'll carry on to the uh, more quite understanding part. Okay, fixture and fittings. So what is a fixture? Attached to the property, real estate property. A removal will cause harm. So it's really a part of the property. Integrated part contribute both real and personal property. So uh, it can become, oh sorry, this uh, is a fixture. I, might, I think it's auto-correct. So it's a part of a real property. So which means like you have installed a ceiling fan. It's considered a fixture. Unless uh, the buyer and owner have a, actually a agreement that the, the seller will remove it. Uh, if not, it is considered a fixture. So fixture is always tested to consider how are they going to test it on court or on contract and whether is this a fixture or a fitting. So a fixture test is really based on two things, a degree and a purpose. How is it installed in a degree? Which means is it drill in or is it just place it there? So uh, if it's installed in uh, physically by drill, uh, this is considered that it's considered a fixture. So the purpose of it is why is this for what? This is to improve the building or this is for personal enjoyment. Some people do install some things like a kind of light or a kind of lamp. Uh, just for personal enjoyment. So it could be installed in a very tight but the purpose was for my personal use. Okay? So fittings is considered a personal property. It's not permanently attached. It can be removed. It can be furnitures. So IRAS, take note, IRAS is allowing you to deduct rental for fittings. So any personal property that you rent, furniture, tables, uh, washing machines, this can be deducted for rental. Compared to fixture, no, it's permanent. You cannot deduct anything from there. So the rights to fixture between landlord and tenant. Okay, always remember anything that can be moved that the tenant put it them themselves, they will have to remove it himself by the tenant at the end of tenancy. It still belongs to the tenant. Any fixture is the property of the landlord. Tenant have no rights. So the tenant cannot remove the door, cannot remove the lights, cannot remove the fan, aircon. No, these are all below the landlord. Unless there's an agreement, like tenants is using it for uh, work use, like uh, all this purpose, do remember to take note that, okay, what's the difference between a fixture and who has the rights in between it? Next. Okay, description of land. So actually, we always have a lot number. So do understand that there's actually uh, two, two, th two parts of component. One will be the survey districts. So it's either book the 34 Mokin, or the 30 town subdivision. So do understand the difference and remember the numbers also, like 34 Mukin. Not the exact individual one, but you must know that there's 34 Mukin and 30 town subdivision, 39 GCB area. Those are the things that you need to remember. Secondly, it will be a lot number that you must understand to identify the landlords, the individual ownership of which piece of land. Okay? Yes. Okay, carry on. Uh, lot based system LBS. So, uh, actually, Singapore have a complete inventory for every lot number, for us to differentiate the, uh, different lots to different owners. So do take note that uh, we have the records of every single thing creation, emigration, subdivision of the lots. So do take note that how are the new lots allocated. One, two, three, a mix, a joint, a mix, uh, existing part col uh, collected or written by the landowner and a new lot reclaimed. So it's a M-Law or whatever, or government uh, collective sales. 
So strata lot is the, uh, only allocated. What is strata lot? You should understand by now that uh, only it can be done under a division of a new building and or a joining of existing strata lots. Okay. So land lot is a land parcel. Can be subdivided or aggregated. Uh, unit of a land ownership. So, do take note, the air and subterranean are also a 3D dimension lot. So, any air space is at 70k series and above, any subdivision is under the 80k. Do take note of this, it will be tested. So, strata lots such as others, uh, there are some uh, prefix of U or whatsoever. Most important, assets lot is actually a prefix of A. Assets lot are mainly car parks. For condominiums, they allocate some of the condominiums allocate car parks for the units owner. So do take note of this uh, system. Go read it yourself. Next, integrated land information system. Do remember the whole name of it. I was tested once in this data meme. They even give you the in list but you have to write down the whole answer so why where is in list in list is in SLA providing the property information such as land title information maps uh, title registration plans land information ownership information go to in list and look at what information and you have to purchase the information this is for you to understand what different platforms require you to get what information, all right? Carry on. Sorry for that. Okay, instead of uh, duration ownership. So there's two types of tenant in Singapore. One is freehold property, one is leasehold property. As of many few years back, now currently all the new land sales from government, GLS, Singapore government land sales, are only leasehold. Freeholds are all private owned now. Because government is not giving out any more freehold. So freehold, which means it's forever. Uh, immobility is the same as all real estate. However, there are two types. Two types. Take note of one is in the sim fee simple. One is the proprietary. So take note of the differences. Read it up yourself. I'm not going to go through every single thing. Carry on. Leasehold. Duration is defined. Uh, now all are 99 years okay in a private list there are some there are triple nine and four nines uh, they are still existing as long as the government do not uh, collect it back it will still carry on to deduct until the end of the list so for JTC HTB they are 30 and 60 years uh, since few years back uh, all the industrial have been changed to 30 years do take note okay shorter uh, land, land title strata act so which means this is actually for all the strata divid divided acts on the specification on each lot have a different title okay vertical division of land into common areas to so take note these are the few types that are affected by it so strata title plans need to be approved by chief surveyor okay uh, the entitlement for to the each strata title with the share value will indicate also uh, for each strata lot. So the bigger space, the bigger size, the uh, share value will be higher. So these all things will be affected in uh, the common fee, uh, management fees, uh, the voting rights. The higher the value, the more it is. So the assignment of lemma uh, in the form of uh, management. Sir. So all these are the payments. But okay, subsidiary uh, strata COT, so it's called SSCT, I remember. Uh, it's a shorter division of the title of the property. So you will receive a SSCT for a condominium unit or a EC. So uh, you're not a land unit. A land, if you are owning a landed, you should receive a COT, certificate of title. But for private, uh, those condominium high rise, most of them are actually SSCT. Take note the difference. Must be approved by chief planner from the URA. Okay. Next, paper one part six. Oh, state land act. 
So this is very very important. Okay, do remember the difference between conveyance, conveyor, and conveyee. Alright. I'm not gonna go through every single thing. This is a revision for to prepare you for the exam. This is not a full course. I will not be going through everything again. I will be reminding this over and over again for you guys. So implemented conveyance and condition under the state land act. Okay. Implied conveyance. Sorry. Uh, the must o uh tenant must always pay rent. Uh, maintain landmark. Uh, do not use land for barrier. No assign or diminish of land in parcel. Conveyance run with the land. So, who get who does who is the owner? The these things will stick onto the land itself. So new owners will have to follow it over and over again. So stick on. Restrictive conveyance cannot be removed by court order. Can only be removed by paying division. Premium DP You guys should know what it means So Implied condition Okay States Anyone uh, In the government sector Has the right To enter the land And search Take mineral And will actually pay The person uh, Landlord The damages So uh, The owner Or occupier To the land right of way from his land to the nearest public road. This is the dominant and servant uh, uh, act later that we will discuss. So government staff, this is very important. Government staff, free access to the land to provide the purpose of making drain or any public use, lah, public use for public purposes. Lah. So uh, collector of uh, land re uh, revenue also have free access. They also have the rights to force you to forfeit the land if you do not comply or they need the land back. They will pay you off, of course, based on the valuation. So differential premium, just now we are talking about it, is actually a charge to leave uh, title restrictions, uh, differential in value, which is the use and intensity in the strata title. So you can change the use of the land or whatever, you have to pay the differences. Sometimes this land is actually for residential use. However, uh, in a, like a white zone, you build a residential, in the end, you want to change the commercial or what. You can, as long as you pay based on the development charge table of rates. This is tested once. Uh. I was tested once, so take note. Okay, what else? Do you reflects the remaining tenant list? Okay, table do not fit. Chief viewer determine the differential payment. So guys, to take note the difference between development charge and deflation premium. They are based on the same table of rate. However, the purpose are different. Do take note. LOI. Okay, temporary occupation license. is actually issued by LSLA for the temporary use of the land. Uh, it can be used for retention of mini encroachment for private property into state land which means that I could have accidentally built my housing into the state land so the government will give you a L, a TOL for you to reverse back to re redo your, work, your housing back into your own land so you don't eat into it so it can be renewed annually monthly uh, it depends on how, how the purpose and the state of land so sometimes one time off event can be done for three months so this one the one time off can be do for Pasamalam Pasamalam they are using the land, so SLA can actually give you some of the empty land near this space for them to do the pasamalam. Okay? Land acquisition at government can acquire property compulsory for public purposes, for public benefits, okay? For any type of res uh, property type, of, and they will pay you market value compensation rates. Okay? Do take note. Alright, paper one, part seven, encumbrance. So, and what is encumbrance? It's the right, the interest, and the legal liability on the real estate that does not prohibit the passing of property but may diminish its value, such as a mortgage eastern, unpaid property tax, a lien. Okay, license. What you mean by license is actually uh, this license I was tested once. So, do take note that grant a party to another party agreement between the, to the property. Uh, license does not give a licensee the property rights just allow the licensee to act in a way uh, like uh, and licensee does not have any legal interest in the property which means like you invite a friend to stay over your house that is a license verbal license not written 
that you can stay overnight for one day or two day. So the your friend can actually come into your property and stay overnight for two days as agreed. So these are license. Uh, it's not a it's not a landlord and tenant. Landlord and tenant there's a legal interest because uh, the tenant is actually paying the rental for the property. So do understand the difference. So there are a few types of license, uh, bear, contractual, installment, and uh, copay with grant. So go read up yourself. I am not going to provide this. You do must understand it yourself. I can't be giving you every single thing. This is just a revision. Okay, Isman. Isman is a certain right of the property of another without processing it. So uh, benefits Isman is uh, given to the dominant ten uh, tenement and... Party B grants the burden of a servant terminal. So uh Isman applicant is run with the land, okay? It benefits the dominant. So do understand that this is the dominant, dominant, this is the servant. Because the dominant is behind, so he have to go to the main road no matter what. There must be a road, so he have to cut through the servant road. So servant have to give them this Isman. So uh, affirmative and negative isman so affirmative is giving right to use another property as a servant for a specific purpose negative is to prevent another person from performing an activity on their property okay so you must know what's the differences okay under the characteristic of isman there must be two parties one dominant one servant uh, the dominant must have benefits and enjoyment of the a servant's property both must be different person. You cannot be at the same owner. Uh, Isman rights claim can be a uh, form or uh, can be form. So it can be uh the Isman can be created in different ways. It can be a binding contract. Uh, it can be expressed, which written down in a will or whatever. It can be implied, which means that uh same. It can be in necessity and anyway, uh in prescription. This I'm not gonna go through every single one. So the termination of Eastman, which means there's a release, there's another wave, uh, the necessity not even the mass merger, the owners bought two, there's a release, ab uh, abandonments, which means that the, the, the Eastman is used for the last 12 years. Okay, and prescription by the government also can be done. Eastman under the Land Title Act, uh, there's also a land uh, that you must do let this for the government sectors, okay? I'm not going to uh, go through every single one again. It's repeating myself. So it's not under the land title. Strata Act. Support. Real. Okay. These are different. Ah. This is for lender. These are for condo. Okay. This is the very good part that I'm able to find this table. The differences between lease, license and easement. Read it yourself. I'm not going to go through. Pause the video. Copy that if you need to. Okay. Conveyance. Start of contract that which the conveyor make a promise to convey not to do to do or not to do an action. A positive conveyance is performing something that do not run with the land. Okay. It could be the uh, unless it's the touch and concern of the land and previously uh, restrictive conveyance which means that we should for something or doing something runs with the land. Uh, Restrict development or use of land can be implied by law or private agreement. The, this restriction can be uh, ex will expire into the years. Lah. This is for your knowledge. So, <sighs> restricted conveyance uh, restrains uh, someone for doing something. So, it can be removed also ah, by notice, by expiry, by uh, government, the, by the court, lah, court order. I will go, go up again. Part 8. Land registration system. Uh, okay, this is under the SLA that every property must be registered in Singapore to protect the rights of the property owners, preventing uh, those uh, fraudulent and uh, secret transactions. Uh. So these are uh, to control the to control and manage the transaction of property. So even and allow public to uh, to for all them to track and facilitate uh, all the price and everything. So there's two types register of dips and uh land title registration. Uh do take note that this is the old one, the first one is the old system, old system is the current. 
So we'll do the difference in types. What, why need to register? Who need to register? And the advantages of that. I'm not going to go through this. This should be in your notes. Or you have to research it under the SLA website. Caveat. Yes, caveat is tested quite a few times. So what is a caveat? It's a legal document recorded by SLA for anyone who have want to claim interest in the property. So uh, once caveat is lodged, it will notify it against the property. There are what type of caveat of interest. Go take note yourself. What's the lapse of caveats? If it's not acted on five years, how can the caveat be removed? Go read up. I'm not going to. This is very important for you to understand and you know for paper one. Law of contract. It could be a binary or uni, uh, unilateral, uh, bilateral or unilateral contract. Mostly a real estate property is a bilateral. Okay, elements of contract. The intention to create legal offer. Acceptance and consideration. Okay, these are the four things that uh, you must take note. This is uh, what the elements of contract. This is tested for sure. Intention to create legal uh, relations must be legally enforceable. Okay, must have a legal relationship. Uh, so offer, which means uh, it could be a price offer or it must be communicated and conveyed to the seller especially as an agent okay so uh invitation to treat no and order you must understand difference between these two and counter offers how you should handle it so offers it's termination of offers such as a withdrawal rejection lapse or death any things that happen your offer is terminated Acceptance, unconditional acceptance must be communicated, must be in a mode of specific, which means must be by SMS or a deposit, email, can be anything, but uh, TOP, OTP, all those things. Okay, consideration, which means there must be something of value, each other must receive something, so uh, must be a uh, value of monetary value to property, okay? Documentation, okay, to take note that what must be documented, real estate contract must be in writing to be enforceable. So, even though there's a lot of soft copy now, but do remember it must be a wet ink as CEA requires it. Conveyance of any estate uh, or interest in land, lease exceeding 7 years. Done in the in English. So always remember, there's three P's. One, two, three. Parties, property and price. Who are the parties buying and selling? What property are they buying and what price are they giving up? Do remember the three P's. Move on. OTP. The most common thing that was OTP. Option to purchase. What is an OTP? Go take a read at it. Okay, second. Sorry. I will erase this. Okay. Guys, valid video for HDB and uh, private do take note the difference and uh, building under construction how much to pay for individual one okay go understand how much what is exercise and how is it exercised what to do after exercise what are the steps and what's the legal age to enter a contract for list of property 18 purchase 21. Terms of contracts. Condition and warranties. Express and implied terms. Unsatisfactory replies from relevant government authorities. Uh, buyer can renown the OTP and get back. Get back. Uh, get back. Get back. 100% OTP fee. Okay. Only when there's unsatisfied replies, the buyer can renew the OTP and get back 100%. Okay, the, after that, the, if after exercise, the replies are still okay, nah, no issues, the buyer cannot renew unless they want to pay the pen, uh, penalty or get sued. So they must proceed with the transaction. The factors, 
mistakes, misrepresentation, duress, and induced influence. So, a mistake could be one person or who is unilateral, mature, and uh, mature and common. It's a very common mistake. Misrepresentation, which means you purposely, innocently, or negligently giving the wrong fake facts. The rest, which means physically and economy under stress and in uh, undue influence, which means you are determining some the position of person. All right, don't take note of the factors of, that will affect the contracts. Contracts can be voided, voidable, and unenforced as long as it is unstamped, both uh, uh, sales of property and uh, lease. As long as it's unstamped, the contract is uh unenforceable so the contract didn't go through secondly cover mTOR and cover mTOR these two is tested so you do must understand what it means I think most of the time you will see this quite often uh, cover mTOR but no one have ever thought you cover vendor sellers beware okay you discharge a contract you need to have done by agreement uh, performance which means it's done can be frustration and can be in a breach okay Okay, remember this or any breach of contract. There was, there's a damages, can be injunction by court, and can be a specific uh, performance to pay back, to do some action for the losing party. Clause in the contract, limitation, disclaimer, indemnity, and exclusion. Okay, for this is the part of the contract. I'm not going in detail. Paper 1, part 10. Okay, law of agency. So, remember the three piece. So, uh, three parties are also involved. This is the also similar three P, but this is not the three part three party. There must be always a principal. There must be always a third party. There always us agents. So it's actually a landlord. We say LL. Looking for RES to find then. So it's always three party. So the agency relationship, which means landlord with RES, must be a bilateral agreement. Both party must consent that the landlord pay you commission. Uh, allow agent represent him bound by contract to enter on behalf of agent. By consent or agreement must be expressed or implied orally or written. For to contract it down residential CA EA from 1 to 8 I will go through that slightly later there are different types of agreement uh, and stop uh, rectification and necessity these three go read up yourself I'm not going to go through every single one okay it's too much information for just paper 1 paper 2 will be even more type of agency non-exclusive agency sole agency and exclusive so uh to do understand the strengths, weaknesses of each type and the utmost good faith. This term, I don't know how to say it, so remember how to spell it. Agents authority, we have an actual express authority. We have also have an actual implied authority and a parent authority. The breach, a uh, breach of warranty of authority, limitation of uh, agent authority. So all these are within the agent's authority take note of every single thing this is our power as an agent so we can describe and discuss all relevant of the property but we cannot sign off unless poa if you are in the poa of that property you by right cannot be acting as res because you have a conflict of interest in that property similar property okay and you cannot receive any transaction money as an agent there's only a few money that you can uh, actually receive the rest of the time no you cannot receive it as an agent so the rights and responsibility of the agent to act and perform the contract okay of an agency obey principal instruction which means obey the sellers or landlord or buyers or tenants instruction. we obey your client's instruction exercise reasonable care and skill do not deteriorate must act honestly okay Duty of an agent to third party must not misrepresent his authority, act honestly, exercise care and skill, which means that if there's a direct buyer when you're acting for the seller, you must you must also assist the buyer, regardless of 
uh, is he paying you all or not? Right of estate agent, right of ammunition, right of reimbursement and and indemnity, remediation for breach. Um, if you any uh breach of this act, you are not entitled for commission. They can sue the seller, and the seller can sue the agent. Okay. So termination of agency, agreement, completion, or, uh. Sellers, revocation, renouncement, uh, there's a death, bankruptcy, uh, commission by law, notice. It could be any part of it, okay? Understand it. So, landlord and tenant. Okay, this is under the list uh, of property. Do take note that there's a difference. Okay, guys, okay, so sorry. Disturbance? Uh, okay. So, under the tenancy, uh, the tenant have exclusive possession of the property within that period. Uh, sorry, this is a typo. This is with fixed. Fixed. Certain period or fixed period. Landlord have rights are subjected to tenancy. Landlord have revisionary interests at the termination of tenancy. Okay? So what are the types of lease? Fixed term. Periodical, at will, or sufferance. Uh, sufferance. Uh, all these three types. I think you guys go read yourself lah. I won't go through every single one. I whatever I say ah, guys. Uh, do read up ah. I only give you the topics to read. Uh, studies ah. I'm not gonna give you super in depth ah, because there are too many information for me to go through. I don't think you want a very long. You want a revision, but however, you need to find the information yourself. But this is a revision. That's uh you don't have to pay. I'm giving you a revision for free. Uh, notes that you want to copy, uh, please pause my video, watch it, and follow. Subscribe and follow me, okay? I will be doing more uh, RES for people and people too. I will also be doing short videos upcoming for Realtor Heist. Alright guys, carry on. In the term of lease, what we need to have? Uh, premises, of course, date, parties, and address of the location. Habitant, remittance, conveyance, condition, and warrants. Okay, these two, read that yourself. Read. Very, very important, okay? Option to renew. There's no auto-renewal. So, both parties must agree. Both parties must agree for the renewal. Diplomatic clause and replica clause. Okay, all these clauses, uh, please read out yourself. Uh, I'm only reminding you. Uh, okay? I'm not going to go through and explain to you. These are the topics that should be in your notes or you should be the one looking for the answers. There's not all information. Not uh the causes are mostly unable to give you every information. Landlord conveyance. Okay, quiet enjoyment of myself to the tenant. Uh, so landlord should not go disturb. Uh. There's no degradation of the grant. Okay, so you don't disturb them. Property must be fit for inhabitants at the start of this. Uh, so you must be a good condition for people to stay. Must be in good repair for any fracture of facilities, okay? So for uh, the Google title, which means the owner has the rights, uh, you have already paid the owner, have already paid the property, has exclusive provision for a fixed term for the tenant, and bounds to the terms of the uh, buyer, uh, owners and buyers uh, buying over uh, this uh, property, you still have to follow what the previous owners are bonded with the lease okay so landlord rights go read that yourself i'm not going to go through tenant conveyance tenants you have to pay the rental you have to keep the property in good repair no unauthorized allegation no committing of waste no uh, sublet further sublet unless uh for private property you can unless the land, uh, landlord allowed you for hdb no you cannot further sublet do not cause nuisance, do, must use within the permitted purpose, which means you're using it for residential use. Please do not use it for other commercial purpose, okay? Allow potential tenant and buyer to view when it's coming to an end, you're not renewing, and pay for other utilities such as electricity bill, internet bills, and the rest. Okay, termination of a lease. So at the end, what is termination? So uh, you can uh, expiry. Surrender by clause. You want to quit, you want to forfeit, and you want to express of power. I'm not gonna go through every single one. Okay. Live in non uh, payment of rental distress act and forfeit of lease. So sometimes the deposit can be absorbed. 
Doctrine of ways. There are four types of ways. So do understand or for go read up, read up, and know the difference. Know the difference. So list. So the assignment of list. So landlord can assign all tenant rights to the new owner. Must and the new owner must follow the list. Side the rights uh, of the tenancy and oblige to remain with the previous owner application. Okay, no vacation, which means the existing tenant uh, to a new incoming tenant, which means that the contract have not ended, they are going to move it over. So, uh, all the parties agree that they're going to move it over. So, a new contract and enforceable contract must be created. So, subletting of lease. So, uh, further subletting, like I said. Agreed by landlord must be in return in contract. Landlord have nothing to do, do not have a, anything to do to sublet except for approval. Landlord hold tenant responsible for anything doing for subtenant. Ah, okay. Property of contract and property of estate. Only parties in contract can sue can be sued. Landlord and tenant. Third party who is not named in the contract has interest in property can sue based on contract. Buyer the new buyer where uh the landlord and the existing tenant. Okay? Do you remember know the difference? Alright, people one part twelve. Negligence. This is a very important part. Law where law holds one party responsible to another party. Civil wrong negligence is a tort where target a breach of duty by one person to another. Elements the duty of care did the agent there's a breach of duty. Did the breach cause any eh, sorry for wrong spelling? There's a breach and causing harm. And the harm must not be too remote. It must be too weird or too rare. This is all under all the consideration. So defense against negligence. So uh is it a contributory uh contributory uh, negligence? Is it a illegal neg negligence or is it a, a volatile non fit individual? So all these are things that uh you can go against negligence. So what are the breach of duty of care? Remember this damages and a lot of uh, compensation based on the cop culpability. So who's at fault? Uh, guys, do take note the difference between negligence and neg negligence misrepresentation, okay? There's a very big difference I'm not going to go through. <laughs> revise yourself, revise yourself. Mortgage. What you mean by mortgage? Which the owner pledge their interest in the property as a collateral security to a, a financial institution for a loan. So, which can be mortgage? Only private. Or commercial or industrial HDB no you cannot use as a mortgage okay this is something that you need to take note of HDB you are not allowed to use as a collateral or security this is tested once uh, these two words collateral or so must have an interest and schedule amortization over a period of time, return interest to mortgage or after loan is paid, basic component, you must have a loan amount, an interest and a duration. How long is the loan amount? So, legal and equitable. Legal mortgage. Give mortgagee rights over property. Equitable. Agreement uh, relating to the deposit of title deed. Secure financing from the mortgagee. The differences equitable mortgages lose priority to subsequent legal mortgage. Okay. I'm not gonna read every single thing, huh? Diet. Rules of priority for money distribution. So always remember when the money is received, when the property is sold. Who will get first? You need to pay the legal fee and tax first. The lawyers, the legal fees, the property tax, the stamp duty, the buyer stamp duty, whatever. Alright? 
Proceed on with the money that are balanced. First, you will pay off to the loan. The bank loan or HDB loan. HDB loan. Secondly, then you return CPF money plus in crude interest. Then the rest of the agent fee. After that, balance will be sales proceed. Cashed. Cashed. Not necessary all sales of property. There's a sale proceed, ah. So for you guys to take note. So the right of mortgage and the rights of mortgage. Uh, mortgage mortgage rights of redemption, rights to sell property, and rights to grant lease. Okay, mortgage entry to possession. Power of sales, appointment receiver, and foreclosure for those people who didn't pay off their mortgage. Type of mortgage. Okay, this is for your understanding. I have never been tested before, but do read up. Standard mortgage, interest only, fixed rate, and variable rate. SIBO. I think it's going to change soon to Sora. Do read up the difference. I'm not sure. Okay. This is very important. Tested always. Gift of property and trust. What's the gift of property? Uh, voluntary transfer without consideration of money, which means it must be drafted by a lawyer. However, it's within three years, it's avoidable as a gift if the donor bankrupt. So, uh, in the trust, a federal relationship, one party give another party Rights to hold a property for the benefit of a third party. Okay? Deep of trust uh, must have a layout or condition of the trustor and trustee relationship. How is trust created? Okay, it can be expressed, uh, intention, will of a trustor and operations of the law. Type of trust, resulting trust, it can be constructive trust and unregistered trust. Fidelity duties of the trustee. He should not uh, gain benefit for himself. Must act honestly. Invest property properly. Okay, must have a proper account for his dealing. At best interest for beneficiary and no misappropriation of trust fund. Remove of trust. Remove by the trustee himself or apply to court. Or the terms and conditions of the deal of trust. Succession. There are two ways of succession, which means inheritance of property. Inheritance of property. First, by will. Second, by incentions succession. So these two, I am not going to go through. You must understand who, what are the differences between the executor and administrator and who will ex uh, act according to the will. And what are the ways are they going to act? Who are they be taking charge of the different one and who how are they going to act it and what are the proof that you need? So you must understand the difference in both ways, who handled it and what is issued to the individual matter. Last, uh, for this part, for the suspension, take note of the serial law for the Islamic inheritance law that they are only allowed to give away one third of their property to who are not entitled lah, in their inheritance line. So, uh, part 16. Future interest. Future interest means uh, legal right to the property but does not include rights to present uh, possession or enjoyment of the property. Revisionary interest which means that uh, any future interest uh, but retain future rights. You give away the interest now, transfer to someone else but however it will return you at a land like, ten, uh, like rental listing of property you give your rights to the tenant but however at the end of the tenancy you get back your rights revisionary uh, interest third life estate interest which means you give the ownership of land or property due to the pressure of uh, duration of a person's life at death it reverts back to the original owner so which means that i give my son a rights to stay in my house until the day i die or he die then it will come back to me as an owner or it will go act against my uh, will. Okay? Co-ownership, the difference between a joint 
tenancy and a tenancy in common. These two is very different. I will show you a table for the difference. Okay. First, tenancy in common. This is a uh, shareholding are not equal. There's a different individual difference between everyone can have a different percentage of owning. Uh, it can be a 40, 10, uh, 40, 30, 30, or it can be a uh, difference of 50, 25, 25. Alright, so there's no, uh, it's actually fixed in a written law. So, uh, there's no rule of survival. So, when the owners die, the property uh, will be passed down according to his estate, such as his son, or it will not be passed down back to the other owners. So, uh, do think of that part. Um, where the share holding are equal, tenancy in common will convert to uh, joint tenancy unless uh, it's registered under the SLA, uh, Singapore Land Registration. So, there's only one unity unit, which is the unity of possession between the owners. Okay? Others will be joint ten uh, tenant. These are mostly... Uh, each owner have equal share, regardless of how many owners. The rule of this is saying that uh, rule of survivorship applies that if one owner dies, the remain the, the surviving owner will have the hundred percent and rights to own that property and deal with the property. They have an equal share regardless of what happened. To have joint tenancy, you must have all four unities. The unities are here: possession, interest, title, and time. There's an interest. The differences. Screenshot, save, write down all these four. Okay, this is tested for sure. For part 18, the restriction of holding land, a Singaporean must be age of 21 and above or a lease must be 21 to, from between 18 to 21, must not hold anything more than 3 years. Go read up, lasting power of alternative and POA. Okay, lasting power of alternative and POA, the differences is that this, uh, this is upon uh, incompetency, which means this person in coma. Coma or un uh, how say, dementia, that they cannot act for the best interest. So lasting part of they can act on behalf of the owner for P O A, which means that uh, you are in a good condition, but however you want to have someone uh second person, second person to have uh control over your asset, control over your assets. Okay, so you take note of the differences and how to terminate. Okay, this one I'm going to go through, but this is tested always. You must know the differences. Okay, carry on. Next, Residential Property Act. Foreigners, including PR, not allowed to hold or buy restricted residential property, which are landed. Okay, landed. Sentosa, for Sentosa, I know a lot of schools and education tell you that they do not need LDAU. I will not say that they're not right. I will just say that in the terms of LDAU, Sentosa owners purchase need to have the approval. However, the approval is easier to get because they are purchasing Sentosa, they still need a LDAU approval. Okay, guys, go read up the website under SLA on this uh, LDAU and how is it going to react. Okay, so foreigners are required to get the land dealing approval units approval to purchase restricted property. So the approval in principle only lasts about six months. After six months, if they didn't purchase it, any property, they need to reapply the approval again. So criteria for approval, whether is this foreigner planning to apply PR or not. Even their PR, they also need to apply, all right? Because they're still considered foreigners. So they also have to see their economical contribution to Singapore, their profession, their expertise, and what kind of investment they have done in Singapore. Okay. So uh, under this uh, 
uh, for only restriction, right? Okay, firstly, uh, it must be a residential land for own dwelling for, and they must stay five years after TOP purchase and they cannot rent out the property. Okay, for less landed. So the minimum MOP for, it, for them to hold the property is five years. They are not allowed to buy anything bigger than 1393.5 square meters. So, if you take note of this, there's no GCB. Okay, unless you're Singaporean. So they must uh, dispose other all other properties in and outside of Singapore when the approval is granted. And uh, inheritance uh, require approval. If not, must sell within five years. So if even you had you are a foreigner that you inherit a property from your uh, Singapore parents, you have to get the LDAU approval to continue to hold the property. If not, you are not gonna get a your citizenship in Singapore. You must sell your property in five years. Okay, if you inherit a landed and you're not a Singaporean. So you need to sell in five years. You don't get approval. So if the foreigner or PR get their citizenship, yes, they have only uh, from the LDAU regarding the uh, they have become the citizenship. So they will be released as a PR and the approval is not needed. So if they lose their PR or citizenship, they must sell the property in two years. Carry on. Okay. So uh, the land planning in Singapore. So the government agency that's managing this is actually the URA, the Urban Redevelopment Authority. SLA in charge of land, but the planning in Singapore is done by URA, okay? So they will plan the land use, they will optimize the limited land in Singapore to meet the future needs. So there are a few four steps on the planning process. One will be the concept planning, one will be the master plan, then the implementation, then go, go into the development control group. So you must understand the difference between the concept plan and the master plans. Okay, guys? Because uh, these are tested uh, in the MCQ for your understanding. For, okay, concept plans. To guide, uh, it's actually to guide coming off Singapore for the 40 and 50 years. It's reviewed every 10 years. So this is not, uh, this is actually changes to uh, meet a long-term population and economical growth needs. However, master plan is a center. It is only a 10 to 15 year plan, which is reviewed every five years. So most of us, our agents, we are basing on this, which is the latest and the updated. It's very accurate. It's not that too far away for the planning. So under the zoning, there are a lot of zoning from residential to commercial to B1 to comics commercial to open to business park. Okay, try to remember all types colors and limitations okay there are similarities like commercial mix and uh, all the other things the zonings are a lot of information do remember the major ones like residential lender commercial industrial b1 b2 and the limitations are almost similar okay i'm not gonna go through now but you go read up the table yourself Thank you so much. You should be able to find it all on URA website. Okay, plot ratio, which means the ratio of the gross area to the site area. The GFA towards the site area. It doesn't matter. So next, void area. Void area are uh, space such as uh, you have a lander area. I'll just briefly draw. You have a lander area and then you have a stairs going up to a second level. This area is considered the void area. However, void area space is so under the sellable floor area. Void area, you cannot do anything to it. So when as an agent, you're selling a void area, do understand the regulation and control of the void area. Is this a void area? Yes. What you must tell the owner, the buyers that void area is calculated in the sales as a GFA to be sold or purchased. And however, they are not allowed to build anything within the oil area. They cannot fill up the area. It is against the regulation or URA and BCA. Okay? Do understand the void area. This is uh, quite uh, important. So the street block plans uh, will be built in the URA so that they will know the layout of the development within the area and the control parameters. Next, building height plans. Okay. 
building height plans is the height control. So uh, basing on the gross plot ratio, the heights of the building is given. So uh, basic, based on this table, this can be found in the URA master plan that will give you the table and you can know how high they can build the uh, housing. Uh. Landed housing area, so take note that there are uh, four types. GCB, it's just 40 for GCB, okay? Bungalow, semi-D, or even terrace. Mixed landed, it could be a mix of bungalow, semi-D, and terrace which means you can make all three within the area okay all right go on next part home office scheme okay it can be registered under a home office under the concept of the owner however there are no more than two employees no external signage no generate noise no odor water or dust and do not fall under the not permitted under the home scheme i have give you the table over here uh understand how this works but uh i have never been tested what kind of uh job can be done in there lah. but for your own purpose i don't know how the exam will be like this time around so do take note okay commercial development okay for commercial development there are uh, shoe box retail so there's a width of the size and the corner is slightly bigger Alright, this is not that. B1 and B2, take note that 40% are used for auxiliary purpose such as office and other. 60% must be used for industrial uh, activity. This, I am pretty sure it will be tested. Then for industrial canteen, uh, must be bigger than, uh, kept under 700 square meter or 5%. Okay? And there must be an approval uh, permit for 3 years, temporary permit for 3 years. Change of use, okay. Change of use is done under URA. There must be a fee required. Uh, if it's for the same use class, there's no need to change as long as there's any different use, such as a uh, retail shop change to a uh, pet grooming. Uh, yes, then you will need to have a change of use via URA. Okay, so for conservation property, take note there are four main category groups. Do remember some locations for historical bureau. So there's historical district, residential historical district, secondary settlements and bungalows. They are under conservation property. So under the conservation property, uh, some re renovation guidelines, the three R principle. Uh, okay, maximum retention, sensitive restoration and careful repair. This is very important. Do remember that. So the... Eh, sorry, this is a wrong part. Uh, this is wrong. Sorry. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This is not allowable use. Allowable use. Okay, this one is not allowed. So, these are not allowed use. You cannot use for conversation. Uh, conservation uh, property. There's a typo error. I'm so sorry about that. All right, guys. Paper one last part. Development charges. So, uh, there will be a tax for development, uh, for enhancement in the land value. So, you are actually making the land bigger, better, or higher, uh, higher use or higher zone. So, to increase the intensity of the development, so the owner has to pay for the uh, development charges. It must be reviewed by IRAS and MND every six months for the development charges. It will be done in March and in September. Calculation for uh, DC can be a fixed rate or case by case basis. Uh, okay, for the development charge payable, it's a development selling minus of the development baseline. It's actually, uh, let me see whether I can show you guys. Okay, development charges is a proposed GFA times the DC rate. So the baseline, development baseline is derived from the use and intensity from approved development. Okay. Okay, alright guys, this is mostly the part one of uh, paper one. That's all for my paper one. Paper one is not that intensive. So uh, there isn't that much information that I can go through. This is actually just a revision for yourself. I will not be uh, telling you what an exam will be like. This is just a so-called recap for you to watch in YouTube. And you guys can prepare yourself for your RES exam. So good luck, have fun, enjoy your exam. Bye.